Katy Perry, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and chat today. Of course. Uh, the new album, Prism, is out. It's so good. Definitely. It's out. It's I out. I love that it's out. It's out. <laughs> oh, the I love that. <laughs> No, I mean, it's so different for me. I like that. We speak the same language, but have a different accent. Yes, we do. So it is out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how is it putting that one together? Um, it was one of my favorite records to make because I got to make it in two places, uh, mostly, uh, in Santa Barbara, my hometown, and in Stockholm. And when I go to Santa Barbara, which is only like an hour and a half away from LA, I just kind of turn back into Catherine Hudson. No Katy Perry, no bells and whistles, no distraction, no heavy makeup, no costumes, none of that stuff. Just sweats and kind of, um, me just being me and enjoying the outside and um, reconnecting with my core and remembering why I love music. And then I went to Stockholm to kind of put what I call the ice on the cake of the record, basically to um, make Walking on Air and This Is How We Do and some real fun kind of uh, songs to yeah. top it off. Now, why did you decide to come out with Roar? Like, there was that big countdown, and then Roar came out, and it was huge for you. Like, I mean, you broke your own records there. Why was it Roar, the first single? Um, you know, it was up to up for debate, a couple of singles. It was going to be Roar or uh, another one. And um, we decided to go with Roar because of the reaction I was getting from my friends. I kind of, like, use my friends as... Uh, guinea pigs, as yeah. test guinea pigs. <laughs> and um, I have a very eclectic group of friends, ranging from, you know, DJs to artists to just moms. Um, <laughs> and they all really agreed that Roar was the best one. And, um, you know, it has that bouncy feel, the eighth note feel, but it also has this message of finding your inner strength again and letting that kind of come out as a roar. And people related to it. Yeah, well, they really did. And it there's seems... something, yeah, there's something like, there's an intuitive thing that happens inside of me, and I've always trust my intuition when it comes to uh, writing songs and picking which songs should come out as singles. Perfect. Well, I love it. And you've also just announced your uh, Prismatic World Tour. Yes. Um, what is the hardest part of touring that much? Uh, I can get very physically exhausting, you know. One thing that's really hard is, is sometimes your voice isn't there. Uh, sometimes you lose your voice, sometimes you get sick because you're a human, yeah. but then you let down a lot of people because you have to either reschedule or cancel and you feel really, really bad, but at the end of the day, you know, you're not a robot, you're a human being that gets sick and with the amount of people that I actually meet, you would imagine I'd even be sicker because I'm always shaking tons of hands, holding lots of people, hugging them, very intimate with people, you know, when I meet them. Um, and so, you know, that's the bummer part of touring is that sometimes you let a crowd down and you don't mean to, but there are so many more positive things about touring and very excited to bring the Prismatic World Tour to Canada, which will be a part of my North American tour, of course. And, um, you know, we're going to hit up some key spots in Canada. Perfect. And uh, you've always said that you're not a role model, but an inspiration. There was one part yeah. in your movie where, you know, you're going through a tough time and you get up on stage and you smile and you do your thing, which is very inspiring to a lot of us. Who has been your biggest inspiration? Uh, I would have to say it's a combination between my best friend and my sister. Yeah. Um, my sister, because she's such a lovely person with a great soul and so protective of me and isn't faced by any of the you know, fame part of all of this. And she really tells it to me straight. And then my best friend is uh, so incredibly intelligent, intelligent, always fighting for women and, um, you know, just so smart. Smartest girl I know and funniest girl I know. And she is like, she's just so unique and has such an incredible personality and really, really will be there for you if you need her. Well, that's what you need sometimes when you are in the limelight all the time. You've got some solid friends. The limelight. The limelight. Is what does what that mean? You're getting squeezed with limes? <laughs> yeah. So I have that to... That hurts. That's yeah. acidic. <laughs> that's what it feels like sometimes. Yeah, it wouldn't be good. The limelight. Um, I have to wrap it up here, but I want to know, do you have any big uh, holiday tra like traditions, you know, with Christmas around Well, we then? don't do gifts. We actually just do stocking stuffers. Best way to go. Yeah, because it takes the pressure off of everyone. And especially when it's like... 
uh, if you compare gifts, you know, I feel bad for my brother. He can't necessarily go all out like I go, you know? <laughs> um, and so we just take the pressure off by not doing gifts and just exchanging little kind of tokens of affection and stocking stuffers. Uh, I know a lot of kids hearing this are cringing and being like, no, yeah. I do not want that <laughs> idea. I do not want that to come into my household. I understand. But when you get a little bit older, maybe you'll adopt that and you'll understand that the most important part of thing, the most impor- important part of Christmas is being with your family, being together, feeling that love, and trying not to kill each other from all the arguments. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to find time for the family this Christmas? Yeah, of course. It's really important for me to go home and um, be with my family and, you know, just eat as much food as possible and fall fall asleep on the couch <laughs> very spontaneously from eating all that food. So that's, we all do that. I've, <laughs> I've got a very normal Christmas. There's nothing extravagant about it. It's like food and taboo, the game, and, like, falling asleep to the Christmas story. There you go. Yeah. So you've got it all planned out. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Katy Perry, for taking the time to chat with us today. This You're was welcome. really awesome. I appreciate it.